On behalf of the Chinese delegation, I would like to welcome the Prime Minister for being present at today's meeting. I would also like to thank you for your statement. I want to make two points. First, the Libyan conflict led to the massive return of people to their homeland and the proliferation of weapons, which has affected the economic and social development of its neighbors and the neighboring countries. This impact might persist for some time. Therefore, we believe that the Security Council should draw lessons from the handling of the Libyan issue. Just now, the Prime Minister of Libya stated that Libya is going to hold a regional conference on the proliferation of weapons. We appreciate this effort and we welcome this development. Secondly, recently the Human Rights Council set up the International Commission of Inquiry. In the report of the Commission, it stated explicitly that the airstrike of NATO of Libya indeed caused civilian casualties. Some of the uh, uh, target of airstrike are not military facilities. The International Commission of Inter uh, Inquiry also suggests that uh, further investigations have to be conducted. This finding is also in line with the reports of some uh, media coverage. China would like to express its severe concern about this. This has a bearing on the accurate implementation of the mandate of the Security Council resolutions. It has a bearing on the authority and the seriousness of the resolutions of the Security Council. And therefore, the Security Council has the necessity to um, understand the whole situation. China supports the efforts of the Security Council to uh, remain seized of the situation and carry out further investigation of this case. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative. National has accused Libya's National Transitional Council of failing to stop human rights abuses. It says uncounted thousands of Muammar Gaddafi supporters are being held without charge and tortured by former rebels. Well, since September, it's reported at least 12 prisoners have been killed as a result of torture. The report comes as Libya prepares to mark the first anniversary of the start of its NATO-backed revolution. But despite the celebrations, the NTC is struggling to get the situation under control. Groups of former rebels are now vying for power. Efforts to disarm the civilian population have failed, and the country's economy is in ruins after the war. Well, Beirut-based political scientist Nana Hashri predicts years of turmoil in Libya. Gaddafi was only a puppet in the hands of the Western uh, uh, countries. Uh, he was buying his, his stance, uh, he was buying everybody out, Sarkozy, Berlusconi, and all of the other Western leaders. Uh, his time got expired, and this is why they got rid of him, because he was paying enough, but not good enough. We all know about what's happening, the recession in Europe, and what's happening towards the oil and the gas. So what they want is the uh, to get to get control of, of everything in Libya. Uh, I see uh, a very grim future in Libya. I I see a civil war in Libya. I see it's never going to have a good, stable uh, uh, environment there. And this is exactly what the Western wants, wants to happen because they want to get uh, uh, control of all the oil, all the natural resources there. Right on our website, rt.com, you can find out how the shockwaves of the Arab Spring are still being felt a year on. It's a case of deja vu in Bahrain. The protesters who took to the streets calling for democracy reforms were confronted with a harsh police crackdown. For more on where the country's headed, I'm joined by Sukant Shandin, spokesman for the British Civilians for Peace in Libya. Thanks for your time. So we see that the first NTC official are leaving, leaving his post after the latest protests. Are we going to see others give up as well and quit on demand by the people? What do you think? 
Absolutely, I think so. I think in his afterlife, Muammar Gaddafi is having the last laugh uh, in relation to NATO and, this, uh, and the NTC. I mean, this has been a revolution of sodomizers and uh, lynchers of black. I mean, they've turned Libya into a warren of the hunting of black skins. They've, they're selling off their oil and natural resources and sovereignty to NATO. And now the, the thieves, that is the rebels, they're all falling out with each other. They can't even be paid by their own masters in, 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 in what they've done, which is actually perform regime change on behalf of the former colonialists of Libya. That's the Italians, the French, and, and the British, and the Americans. Now, uh, my sources on the ground tell me, and it's confirmed, that there is a, a, a Benghazi representative to the NTC called Mrs. Ips, uh, Ibtisam, who has resigned, and she has said that others are to follow. And a, a, as you mentioned, the, uh, the deputy head has resigned after violent protests against him. Now, if you don't want to believe what Gaddafi said about what was going to happen after the regime fell, and everything ha that, that I would say that he said has come to pass, then listen to uh, Mr. Georgia, or listen to Abdul Jalil. Mr. Georgia is saying Libya is descending into depravity and hatred. And Mr. Abdul Jalil, who's probably about to resign if he's not assassinated, like the NTC military head, Abdel Fattah Yunus, has said Libya is in danger of descending into a bottomless pit. So really, this is the achievement of freedom and democracy by NATO. It's all become very clear. So in the event that there are uh, members of the NTC who do step down, who do you think will step in to replace them? It's, you know, who's, whoever can hack the job. <laughs> you know, who do you think frankly, will be the best I mean, person? It's, it's, the thing is, with the, the new electoral law, it bars anyone who has any real association or loyalty to, to the previous regime of Muammar Gaddafi. You know, the, the Gaddafi regime could control the whole of Libya, could find peace amongst all the tribes. The new regime cannot even control something in one town or one area. Now, the BBC is reporting from Garyan about the secret prisons, about the torture that's go, t t torturing that's going on. The BBC is feigning surprise that this would be the, this is the outcome of the NATO enterprise in Libya. Everyone knew this, everyone with a little bit of political nous and pragmatic reality could see that, that, that this, is, this was coming to pass. But what about, what about um, Imam Tantouche, who's still tortured and there's YouTube videos of him being tortured? What about Khaled Kaim? What about Hala Mizrata? What about Mr. Dorda, the representative of the United Nations? Everyone in the United Nations knows Mr. Dorda. He is today being tortured, he is being tortured, and many other former senior regime people. Where is the Red Cross? Where is the United Nations? Are they facilitators to a NATO project in Libya, or are they actually there to provide some semblance of humanitarian support? So in terms of who's going to step in, I mean, who's going to step in to do what? what? What can they actually manage in Libya? It's a complete farce, and the people of Syria, and the people of Lebanon, and the people of the Global South have to see that what's happening in Libya is coming to them if they're not able to defend themselves and stop this rolling Western aggression now, against other countries. Now, protesters say the, the National South. Transitional Council is failing to cover the basic needs of the people. Why do you think this is happening when there's so much oil wealth there? This is, this is happening because this is the business of the West, is to absolutely devastate and knock out any country that's an obstacle to their total domination um, uh, in, in the world. You know, it's, it's no coincidence. But you know, wouldn't, the it be in the West, wouldn't it be in the West's advantage to rebuild the infrastructure there, to keep it going, so that in case their primary uh, desire there is oil, to have a functioning country that can keep providing it? A great Chinese revolutionary said that the West only picks up a heavy rock only to drop it back on its feet. You know, they've picked up the enormous rock which is Libya and is, and, and is, and is dropping constantly onto the feet of NATO, meaning that they, they just, the alliances, the political alliances that they've made, they're in a catch-22. Because of the political alliances they've made, these allies of theirs in Libya are absolutely just uh, steeped deep into tribal, inter-tribal conflict and inter-political fratricide of, uh, conflict. So there really is no way out really for any type of order in Libya, perhaps, and this is, the, this is the main strategy, that the West want to knock out Libya as a resistant nation in the global south and try to secure, in terms of security and Western mercenaries, etc., uh, the, the, the oil wealth of Libya. But it remains to be seen whether the resistance in Libya can, can, can allow that to happen or not. All right, we have to leave it there. Sukan Shanden, spokesman for the British Civilians for Peace in Libya. Thanks for your time. Mass graves containing around 900 bodies have been discovered by authorities in the Libyan capital. They're believed to be victims of clashes between former rebels and Gaddafi loyalists in Tripoli. The new government's fighters are now pushing toward the center of search, the colonel's hometown, and one of his final strongholds. The conflict has taken more than, oh, than 30,000 lives since it started in February.
Hezbollah leader Muammar Gaddafi has apparently released a new audio message calling for people to rise and resist the nation's interim leaders. The colonel's whereabouts have been unknown since the capital was taken over by the opposition in August. The transmission comes as fighting between remaining loyalists and former rebels aided by NATO airstrikes intensifies in Gaddafi's hometown of Sirte. The Libyan civil war was joined by NATO in March with an objective to protect civilians under a UN resolution. But as the president of the Arab Lawyers Association tells RT, the high death toll proves that NATO did not have peaceful intentions from the start. We have to remember that the resolution of the UN was, in fact, only confined to no-fly zones, to imposing no-fly zones. It was there to protect civilians. At the end of the day, we end up with NATO actually going to war against the people of Libya. Uh, obviously, the dictatorship which it prevailed there is no reason to declare war on the people of Libya by NATO. I think the USA, Britain, France, and the Western powers are hiding now behind NATO so that no one can point a finger at. But the figures of the casualties caused by NATO bombing is really mounting. Uh, two weeks ago in the Human Rights Council in Geneva, the commission which was asked to investigate uh, the uh, situation in Libya came with the report saying that they have discussed with NATO, but NATO has confirmed to them, quote, that they have not had any targeting against the civilians. I think NATO is continuing its war against the Libyan people albeit that uh, they got rid of the dictatorship, but we seem to be heading to the same exercise they have done in Iraq, and I think Russia was right in taking the position vis-a-vis -vis Syria, because we don't want a repeat performance whereby uh, the UN took the position in Iraq and then took the position in Libya. The UN is not there to change regimes. It may protect humanitarian purposes, it might protect civilians, it might stop wars, but it is definitely not to change regimes. Train out of some other stories making headlines across the... Thousands of civilians are fleeing the city of Sirte in Libya en masse as a fighting between Gaddafi loyalists and the former rebel forces reaches an apex. Reports saying most of the refugees are heading for the comparative safety of the desert, leaving behind their belongings and livelihoods. Well, they're critically short of water, food and medicine, and there's now a very real threat of a new humanitarian disaster emerging. Aid workers are rushing to the area but continued fighting is uh, preventing access. So let's get more on the situation now and cross live to Debe Sakhar, a spokeswoman for the International Committee of the Red Cross who's on her way to the area. She joins me live now uh, by the phone. Uh, Ms. Sakhar, can you tell us please more uh, about what's going on there? Is the situation really as dire as uh, reports seem to suggest? Well, I mean, the, the ISIS city has been present in the area since almost a week now. We are currently in the east um, of Sirte. Uh, the, the families, hundreds of families, as you mentioned, are leaving Sirte and they are being displaced uh, to areas, for, for instance, the desert that is between Sirte and the village of Harawa, or even going to Harawa or to any other places where they could be and, uh, you know, be, be uh, in safe places. These people who already left, they are living in difficult conditions, especially those among them who are in the desert. Uh, the information we get from the people getting out of it uh, is mentioning that uh, inside it, the food supply is getting very low, there is no water, no electricity, and they have very difficult access to, to health care. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, this is... In brief, what you say is the, the food supply there? is. Um, well. You say the situation's critical, the food supply is running low, people there are getting desperate. What's being done to reach these people and to try and supply them with the aid that they need? Is enough being done? Sorry, I couldn't hear you well. Could you kindly repeat? Uh, you say that the situation there is critical, that uh, crucial supplies are running low. What's being done to try and reach the people who are now displaced and uh, in desperate need of help? Is enough being done? Yes, for the ICRC, we have been trying since the past weeks to enter the city of Sirte. We are prepared, we have all the humanitarian assistance needed, but so far we couldn't get the necessary security guarantees to be able to get. We have attempted to get to Sirte by boat, but our attempt did not, uh, did not success. 
Uh, and then we are we are still uh, intensifying our contacts with the parties to the conflict to be able to get into Sirte. Now, for the people who left Sirte already, uh, towards the east and towards the west, the ICRC is following up closely on the situation and is providing assistance to these people, mainly when it comes to delivering hygiene kits to give them food parcels, distribute water, and um, to help them cope with the difficult conditions uh, in which they are living. So for the IDPs who are le leaving CERT, uh, we are providing the necessary assistance. However, inside CERT, for the moment, we, are, we still didn't manage to get access. All right. Uh, Dibé Sakhar, a, a spokeswoman for the International Committee of the Red Cross. Uh, many thanks for speaking to us here on RT on the ongoing situation in CERT. Do uh, stay with RT to keep across developments on that.